Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. If you are following Craneo Subterraneos and your blog, Back to the Essence podcast, tonight I'm really, really happy and excited to introduce one of the most influential artists from the 90s, um, someone that I follow his career since his very beginning with songs that pretty much left a, a deep mark uh, when it comes to lyricism and production and uh, and just bringing the real hip hop. Uh, without uh, any further ado, I'd like to introduce none less the Jeru the Damager. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, sir. Yeah, what's, what's going on? What's going on? Very good, man. Really happy to have you. You know, um, really happy to have um, real talent and, and someone that has a, a long career uh, like yourself. Um, I came out with a few questions and, um, you know, before we start this interview, I think it's good that, that we let people know um, your, how do you start it? Like really, what gave you the motivation to say, you know, I want to become an MC and at what age did you rock your first block body? Oh man, well I, I first was like, I wanted to be an MC as long as I can remember, but I wrote my first rhyme when I was about eight years old. Um, I got a chance to grab the mic and say a little thing. It wasn't nothing really. It was it was like fun, you know what I mean? It wasn't like I was really doing it, doing it, but it, it was just the inspiration that I had, you know? So I always just wanted to be an MC, and, and that's what it is. I, I was just rhyming all the time through my teenage years, and until I got the chance to make my first record. Excellent. Um, how long was that uh, wait from when you started until you were a was able to materialize your first album? Like, how many years did you work on your craft prior to, to really doing uh, it professional? Man. 12, 13 years. Like I said, I started I started writing rounds when I was about 8, 9. And my first record came out, I was... 21 when I first rhymed on the Gangsta album when my album came out I was 22 so like around like I said 12 13 years wow that's a long time and you're still working at it you know I, I been seeing a lot of um, uh, your podcasts and the stuff that you do for your channel and all the new videos that are coming out so I'm really happy to see that that you're still working hard for the culture and creating great music um, I, yeah, I, yeah I'm still rocking for sure, a lot of shows. They love you over there in yeah, Europe. A lot of shows. <laughs> um, let me talk about something that is evident in your lyrics. You, you are a very smart individual. You um, um, used to sell books back in the day, I believe. You, you mentioned that in one of the interviews. I yeah, hope I I'm not wrong. I did. I and, did sell books. Yep. And from selling those books, um, I'm pretty sure you read a lot of them. But is there a book? that you can tell us basically this is one of the books that opened my mind to a different mentality that really influenced you as a person and as a writer well i mean i was i was reading a lot before that but one of one of um the books that i i i, I read that was really got me onto like more mysticism and stuff it, and you know what actually it was it was these books called um the chronicles of Dao. And it was written by Ding Ming Dao, and it was a book about um, it was a, actually a, a a book about a guy who he grew up in China, and his family put him into like a Taoist situation, and and so yeah, it was called The Chronicles of Dao by Ding Ming Dao. But that was before I was selling books. That's what got me like in the Taoism. But then I had another book. It was called Metu Netta, and that was basically about um you know just mysticism and 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 comedic mysticism or egyptian mysticism uh, but i read a lot of different kinds of books i read books on self-help the art of war uh the african origin of biological psychiatry um they came before columbus uh, all kinds of books okay i was always an open individual yeah <laughs> i was always open no, but I think, uh, you know, a lot of people read books and a lot of rappers, pretty sure, they read books. But I think in your writing, uh, in your music, we can see a lot of that knowledge. And, and for someone that is not really paying attention, can just really listen to a line and not really get the deep meaning of that line. So I think people that listen well, to your no. music better do some, some studying. <laughs> 
yeah, and I mean, really, that, that you know, the books, that's secondary. I was always taught reading was very important in our family. Knowledge is very important. You know, my dad, here, him and his friends, they started, like, one of the first Rastafari organizations in, in New York City. So it was always about knowledge and, and, and wisdom and understanding and, and learning. It's just, that's just part of my family culture. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, that's what drew me to the books because I always read as a kid, even when my mom, she said she couldn't really punish me because all I would do was read books, right? And she couldn't stop me from reading. Nice. So. When, when it starts um, at an early age, definitely impacts your life um, and, and make you a better writer too, um, I believe. Uh, just sure. tell us a little bit um, about how do you link up with um, Guru? and premiere to um to you your debut album well i mean i was i was actually hanging out with ghouls some years before my album came out but that's because um i went to school with a guy called my man shab and uh his cousin was in one of the carnations uh incarnations of gangstar because you know it was a few different incarnations of gangstar and um my boy Chad, he's like, yo, my man, he's coming from Boston. So my man Tommy Hill, Little Dab and Gusmo, they were really hanging out with Goo first. Then I start hanging around and then basically that was it. We were just homies. You know what I mean? It wasn't like it didn't come as a musical thing. They were doing music, but we was just pretty much hanging out and then it just you know, I just got my chance to burn. Yeah, and, and we it's one of the best producers in the game. I mean Premier has a flawless record. I never heard a record from Premier that I would say, nah, it's all right. But I got to give credit to the uh, other producers that you have been working with in Europe. Like I, like I said, I did my homework to be able to ask you these questions. And, and, and there are some great songs and, and, and the beats are incredible and, and the writing is still impeccable as always. So you you always been um, lucky to get really good production <laughs> on all of your albums. I mean, well, I, I, you know, I, I have to be involved to a degree. I just won't take any beat or anything like that. Like when me and Pamela were working together, I was there from the conception to the end. It wasn't just like, here's a beat. And you know what I mean? We always sat in the studio together and listened and, and decided what I like because I mean, that's, that's what's going to make it, you know, unique and what's going to make it yours. And, you gotta sit down and people just give you beats and you know what I mean? I'm not that that kind of person. It's funny that you mentioned that because I wanted to ask you about that. Like how much of a control do you had on the first project, or on your first album, uh, The Sun Rises uh, in the East? Like how, how involved were you through the whole thing? I mean, I was involved 100,000%. I mean, we sat down in the studio, we would be in the studio sometimes all day you know from there just cooking up stuff or i might hear a sound and say i like that sound and he put it together what he's doing just like when you know when we did come clean he had already had the beat we listened to um we listened to a few records we heard the record he's like yo should i loop it like this or you like me to loop it like that i was like like that he did it and that was it. And we did I'm the Man, the same thing. I came up to his room. He started playing things that he thought he said. I was like, oh, I like that one. He's like, bet, I'm going to hook it up. And boom, that's what it is. That's why I was always uniquely me because he gave me things that I liked. You know, it wasn't just like, all right. That's excellent. A lot of artists don't get that these days. You know, sometimes somebody signed to a label and they just got to do what the label asked them to do and produce those those commercial records and all of that. But it's great that at that time you had um, that much control over your project. Another uh, thing that people talk about online a lot too is the fact that in the um, cover, the artwork for, for this album, um, the two towers are like on fire and you see kind of the destruction. Oh yeah, it looks like 9-11 and shit. A exactly. Yeah. And, and a lot of people say that could be some prophetic stuff. So do you remember who created the cover and why were the towers put on fire? I mean, we created the cover. Me, my man Daniel Hastings and his team, we sat down and we talked about the idea and that's what we came up with, right? Because it's the sunrise in the east, so we like, yo, imagine if the sun was like right on the city, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the sun, that's why I'm over there and we like burning up the city, so, and those were iconic buildings, right? It's just, 
it's the Twin Towers, you got the Statue of Liberty floating around in, in the water. It's like whatever, anything that happened to do with my projects, it was never just somebody giving me something. I always had a hand in the creative process. We already always sat down and discussed what we wanted it to be and, and how we wanted things to, to happen. So, I mean, prophetic, I mean, I guess, you know what I'm saying? But it was just the artistic vision that we had. Yeah, that's one thing that I always seen with you. Uh, it's not just the music part of it, not just the audio, but the visuals are always been crazy. And a lot of those videos from back in the, uh, at the beginning of the 90s for your first album, they were really like out there, you know, nobody was doing the transitions and the style of videos that you were doing. Another one that really blew my mind was um, uh, No One Can Stop The Prophet. Like that video is just ridiculous. And I kind of... Yeah, that's my man Daniel Hayson, the same dude did my album cover, same thing. We sat down, we talked about it, we came up with ideas, my man Chris Cortez. And we always, I always sat down, I never just let somebody give me something, because that's not me. If it's my album, that means it represents me, so I have to, I have to be in there, right? I have to be part of the process, you know? Definitely, and I think that's, that's what made those albums classics to this day, and nobody can deny, you know, how much talent you have, and, 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 and those albums are albums that you don't skip. These days you get an album, and I don't want to mention any names, but you listen to an album, all you get is one or two tracks, and the rest is just skip, skip, skip. That doesn't happen with you. Well, get that's a- because of technology. You know what I'm saying? It's like technology changed that. When, when, when we was doing albums, you had to make your album good all the way through, right? So that people going to listen to it. It wasn't too much skipping. The CD kind of did that, you know what I mean? And then the MP3. So people don't care about people's attention spans are shorter. Think how much longer records used to be. You know what I mean? Like, not just like, but let's think, look, some records, disco records and all, have five minute mixes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, things were different. Now, like, I don't even know when that whole 16 bar thing became a thing you know what i mean like before you just rap till you was finished that's you it <laughs> you just rap to you rap to your idea was finished you know what i'm saying yeah now they tell so, you do the hook this way and do 16 bars and it's too long yeah it, it right. is different now but the technology has a lot to do with it uh, that's why yeah, tape, because people have short attention spans yeah so, and, and the know, tapes were awesome probably, They're, Go ahead, go ahead. Exactly. Yeah, so like, like I said, the tape, you, you wanted to make it so they want to listen to your whole tape, right? Once you pop it in, you know, but now you can just click, click. You don't even got to do nothing. MP3, you, you can have a 10,000 song and just jump from song to song to song to song to song. So it's people who probably rarely even listen to whole albums now, you know? Definitely, man. But we have to take it back to what it used to be, you know, real music, you know, uh, not just cookie cutter rap that's what that's what I'm, i've been listening lately on the radio but that's why yeah, I, I mean that's what it is you know it's unfortunate but that's the future you see what i'm saying we could do we could still make records that i mean i'm gonna always make good records and records that i like to make that are artistic but unfortunately the masses the way it is i was just looking at some stuff yesterday from like x clan and, and i was like wow that's what rap used to be but it's by design that it's not like that anymore because that was a message. That was a revolution. That was a way to get the whole world because you see hip hop influences everything. When you talk about pop culture, you really talking about hip hop culture. And they just had to water it down and, and, and take away the power from it. So that's, you know, that was all by design. That's why it sucks as much as it does today because it was too powerful, it was too scary. Yeah, it's been and manipulated now. Plans and Jay would do that. Exactly, you know? So that's what that is. I mean, the lyrics definitely influence the influences people. And when you say in stuff that is true in people's faces, you know, you go back to Public Enemy, uh, they were they were criticizing the whole system, um, you know, mentioning racism and things that people will say it at closed doors, but they will never say on the record. That's something Look, that Public even, Enemy. Even, even, even. Let's talk about even like N.W.A. You say that's gangster rap, but that was still revolution. They were saying, fuck the police, express yourself. You know what I'm saying? A hundred miles and run like things that that was against the system. You understand what I'm saying? It was against the system. The whole the whole hip hop in general was against 
the system. And now, you know, we had those words and revolutions start with words, right? No revolution just started with action. All revolutions start with words. So what they did today, they took away the words, right? Mm -hmm. So you ain't gonna have no revolution because it ain't even no words. Nah, now you mumble. mumble. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? Wow. That's the science. They took away the words. Like like before in slavery days or in, in whatever, they would poke your eyes out or cut off your tongue if you knew how to read and write and all that stuff. Now that you have the access to all of these things and they you not even you voluntarily not saying nothing. So you just gave your words away. You know? You gave away the revolution. So that's Wow, that's a that's that's, that's a crazy concept, but you're absolutely right. If they take the words away, they take the power. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That is insane. That's, so that's and that's just what it is. It's all by design. It's not a mistake. Like we get a lot of times we get mad at the youth, but it's not really them. It's the design. You understand what I'm saying? It's the whole design of the whole thing. They gave them a lot of money, but they not saying nothing. So they not really affecting the world in a real positive way. They just keeping the the status quo. The, the system just moving how it should be moving. Now, and even the message before they used to glorify the drug dealer was like, okay, somebody that is making the money, but sometimes he gives back to the community. But now it's the exactly. opposite. It's the drug it's use. <laughs> now it's the drug use. Now, like, it's you're nothing. the user. You're not even the, the dealer. You're just using it and you're trying to encourage everybody else to be on pills or be on lean. It's right. You know, all that crap. It's nothing. You know, it, 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 like I said, it, it's just keeping people just on a, a mellow level you know what i mean no revolution no type of against the system because even the drug dealers against the system right true <laughs> he, he going against the system but now everybody just you know just fall into the system you know cut off your dick and be like caitlin jenner you know what i'm saying shit like that like so it's just it's just a lot of different things but You know, is is we still gonna keep doing? I mean, me personally, J. Ru, I'm gonna constantly keep doing what I'm doing, even if I have to refine it and and show you different ways to have the message. The message is always gonna be there. The know? message has got it's gotta be there, and that's why I do this this blog and podcast also to teach the listeners, the the new, the youngins that wanna get knowledge that that are thirsty about the culture, that wanna learn the real facts. That's why we do this kind of. Uh, Uh, shows and things like that to keep people educated, you know. But um, thank you so much. You know what I'm saying for for making me a part of your podcast and, and, and helping that we spread the knowledge and you know let everybody know. Just come over to to check me out, jrudedamager.com, and you know if they want to sign up to like my 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 newsletter or anything like that, they can hit me up on on email contact at jrudedamager. And yeah, and then I, you know, back to the essence, you know what I'm saying? Because that's how we're doing it. For sure. Yeah, all your links will be there um, on the podcast and on the video. So make sure you follow these men and keep hip hop alive. Thank you so much for your time, sir. For real. Thank you. One love, peace, happiness. God bless and keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Thank you.